to another episode of Pit Lane Parlay. Welcome to another episode of Pit Lane Parlay. My name is host Mike Jokum. Jess joins me and joining us uh, this afternoon is driver of the 77 Honda LA Honda World Car, Taylor Hagler. Taylor, how are you? Good. Good. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Uh, and I will turn it over to Jess to get going here. Hey, Taylor. Thanks for joining us. Um, I just want you to tell us a little bit about how you got into motorsports. Uh, okay, so I've kind of always watched motorsports with my dad from when I was younger, six and on. Um, started with NASCAR. I feel like every Texan or Southern person does start with NASCAR and just kind of like works up from there. So I've always watched it with my dad. Um, and he grew up in like Georgia and Alabama. So he would always go to Road Atlanta. And that was just like his track that he always went to when SCCA had the runoffs there before there was 10 AB. Heard all the stories. Um, so it's kind of like one of the first tracks that he took me to and he's been going to Petit Le Mans for a while, always has the same RV spot. So I started going with him when I was in middle school, I think I started going to Petit Le Mans with him and just really got into at the time what was, um, American Le Mans series. Um, so just kind of got that. And then they always had the Skip Barber racing school booth set up. And my older sister was old enough to drive at the time. 16 just got her license. And I feel like with every 16 year old that just got their license, they all kind of drive a little crazy. So my dad was like, I'm gonna get your sister a racing school. She's gonna be a race car driver. She drives like a crazy person. This is gonna be great. And I was just like, okay, like she doesn't care about racing, but okay, you do you dad. <laughs> <laughs> so he got it for her one year for Christmas and she never used it. And I think when I hit like 19, and we're about three years apart. Um, so when I hit 19, I got out of showing horses and was like, hey, uh, you think that Skip Barber thing is still any good? And he was like, well, I, I guess like we can use it. And I was like, okay, it's cool. So like I did the three day with them just to use it because it was there, like might as well. Didn't know if anything was going to come of it. And he was like, hey, like you're actually kind of good at this. Like we should try the two day. So we did the two day and then he was like, okay, we're going to go club racing. Like we might be able to do something with this. So I'm just kind of like went from there. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. So you made your debut in 2018 down in Texas. Yeah. It looks like you had a, your first podium at Circuit of the Americas. Yes. And then Watkins Glen last year and a pole position at Watkins Glen. So last year, I guess, was your kind of rookie year. And I think you were, or 2018, uh, you were rookie of the year. So what was it like kind of getting the, you know, that competitive side going and, and having so much immediate success? Um, I think the competitive side has always been there because I did show horses. So I've kind of always been like a competitive athlete. Um, that's kind of always just come natural to me. Um, but kind of just going from like zero to a hundred real quick, just like even in club racing and like, did a year of club racing and then did my rookie season pro like it kind of all just um escalated really quickly and uh I still kind of can't wrap my head around it it's still a little <laughs> overwhelming so I just kind of try and keep like I try and make sure that I keep ties to everyone like even in my club racing and um I still know a few of the coaches that did the skit barber with me and so I just kind of try and keep ties with everyone and like kind of keep myself grounded so I don't get a big head. I get it. It makes sense. It up. So um, that's just kind of how I deal with that. Awesome. Cool. Um, glad that you are trying to keep a level head at least. It's, it's probably difficult given your success so far. Um, obviously things right now are a little crazy in the whole world, not yeah. just the racing <laughs> world, nice. but the whole world. Um, yeah. So it's, it's kind of maybe not a fair question, but what are you most looking forward to this year uh, with your racing career? Um, this year, I really just want to like get out there and get my feet wet, I think. Um, I, I mean, going from like club racing to SRO was a big jump. And then I think SRO to IMSA is a huge jump. Um, so I kind of just want to get my feet wet this first year in IMSA um, and just kind of like, 
see how much I can progress within this series. Um, I feel like I've progressed a decent amount in every series that I run. I learn something new from every series. So I kind of this year just really want to like learn a little bit more of like the basics and a little bit more of like the aggression and the passing. And I want to learn um, like more of like learning drivers while you're on the tracks, how to get used to tracks quicker. Um, I mean, I went to a lot of different tracks with SRO, but I'm going to go to even more with IMSA ones that I haven't been to. So I want to kind of get used to learning those tracks really quick. So I kind of just want to learn all the little basics that I haven't really learned yet and get that going before I really try and like push myself to podiums and championships and all this. I just kind of want to get my, my steps going. I like it. It sounds good. So on that note, you did have one race this year back in, in Daytona in, in January. What was your first race like? I know I don't think it went completely to plan. I think you guys had some sort of problem. Uh, I, I didn't get there in time for the race on Friday, but uh, I did see plenty of, of your co-driver, Ryan Eversley's uh, messages about it. So what was it like uh, from your point of view? Um, it wasn't too bad, actually. Um, I was a little worried just because the rules going from SRO to IMSA are different regarding starts. They're right. backwards. Um, so just like trying to remember those rules at the start and like not passing unless everyone in your line passes. Um, so like the start went really well for me because I was just able to like follow everyone through turn one um, and pass a few people on that. And then I think actually just race wise, it went pretty well. I was starting to like learn some of the drivers that I was behind and make sure to stay out of all of the larger cars ways and like just kind of be a little bit more aware. So I was learning all of that. And um, I mean, I was still like learning the radio because all of the radio communication is different with the engineers and all of the mechanics. And then Ryan being my coach at the time at the same time as well. So I was still like learning that. Um, but I think overall it went pretty well, even with the tire issues that we did have, it didn't end up too bad, so. Awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about some hobbies you have outside racing? Um, there's not very many, actually. Um, typically, just like on a normal like month off, I kind of just like work, um, which I used to ride horses and show horses before, and then I got into cars. And then I've kind of just like mixed the two. So right now I work for a horse rehabilitation and conditioning center. So I've kind of mixed the two. Horses are kind of my hobby. Um, sometimes I'll play like a little bit of Xbox, read, go hang out at the pool, hang out with my friends. Like I don't really have like any hobbies per se that I guess I would consider that I do. Those are all hobbies. So interesting. <laughs> So I'm going to switch it back to racing here. We, we were just talking about your, your co-driver, Ryan. We all see the uh, hilarity that he provides on social media. And, and we, I've talked to him previously, and, and he's very fun to talk to. Yeah. What's he like, actually, when it comes to driving and being a mentor and on the racing side of things that people don't necessarily get to see on social media? Um. I mean, he still has that same personality. He doesn't, he think he keeps things to a serious level, but not so serious where it's almost like unenjoyable. Right. Um, he's still able to like make light of situations. He's very, he's very motivating. Uh, okay. Kind of just like is always there to remind me like, hey, these people have been driving for a while. You're up at their times. Like keep it going. Keep where you are. Just like maintain your pace. You're doing great. And whatever so he's he's pretty motivating on that um obviously he has a lot of information and a lot of experience so i'm able to pick his brain on that while we're in the trailer and going over like uh, any of the practices or doing a track map or anything like that so i'm able to pick his brain on that and he's pretty serious about that um and he does all of that pretty quick and then he's able to get back to the like making a relationship like being friends type of thing so all like he's he's very serious but he's also able to keep things lighthearted and not like a 
job that's unenjoyable. It's still like a hobby, a sport, something that you have fun doing, but learn at the same time. Are you going to be able to take place in any of his iRacing uh, crazy events that he's putting on while we're we're all stuck uh, at home right now? Um, I think we're going to try. We've talked about it. Um, I do have a racing simulator that runs iRacing, but I live in San Antonio and my simulator's at my parents' house like 30 minutes away, so it's not exactly attainable. Um, <laughs> Understandable. So- We've, we've talked about it. I'm working on getting the sim moved um, to a house that I just purchased towards like the end of April. So I'm going to try and squeeze my way in there like April, May. Cool. What track are you most looking forward to this year? Uh, I'm going to have to go with Watkins because I did pretty well there last year. So I'm really looking forward to going back to Watkins Glen. Can't blame me at all on that one. <laughs> Watkins or Road Atlanta because I've have so many laps at Road Atlanta. It's insane. Those two for sure. Nice. Both great tracks. And I'm going to ask a question, similar question here. Favorite track that you'd like to go to that you haven't raced on yet? I think I would have to go with Laguna Seca. It just looks really fun. I've been to it once for like a Ren Sport reunion with my dad a few years ago. So I got to see the track, but I've never been on it. And it looks like fun. I like it. Good choice. It is beautiful out there. Um, Let's see. What kind of things are you doing right now to kind of keep yourself busy um, while we're in this weird uh, period that we're in? This quarantine period that we have. Um, my work is still running, so I'm still able to go to work on a daily basis. Um, and that pretty much takes up my entire day, 7.30 to 4.30. Um, and then other than that, I mean, my sister will FaceTime me every now and then. And I just like cook every day, do laundry, clean watch movies. I think I've watched every movie there is on Netflix and Hulu <laughs> and Amazon. I can't watch another movie again in my entire life. I think probably the same things everyone's doing. <laughs> Binge yep. watching TV and Sounds eating. Sounds very familiar. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. So I have to ask on that, on that front, have you seen the ridiculous Tiger King documentary on Netflix? I haven't. I'm going to. I need it's, to start it. Yes. I have heard all about it and it sounds like an amazing show to watch. I just haven't gotten it to it yet. It makes me feel like I'm much more normal than I thought <laughs> beforehand. I'll just leave it at that. All the memes are very true that you've, yeah. you guys have probably seen online. We watched all seven episodes in less than 24 hours. So it's definitely binge worthy and enjoyable. Yeah, so, I, that's my next one. Yeah, it's. I think there's one more out there that everybody's been watching. Oh, Ozark, but I, I'm a couple seasons yeah. behind on that one. Yeah, I haven't started that one. So when racing does return, mm-hmm. you mentioned that you want to keep improving on, on your IMSA debut. What, what kind of things do you think you need to keep improving on to build up that experience this year? Um, I definitely need to keep improving on getting my lap times up a lot quicker. It tends to take me a while to like get to the pace that I need. Um, So that's definitely something that I've been working on all last year and through the roar and through qualifying for Daytona, I was working on getting my pace up um, a lot quicker and kind of planning my passes. Um, those have always been something that like I've kind of had an issue with is like figuring out how to make a pass stick, when to do it, where's the best place to do it without like dive bombing someone and causing an accident. Um, so I've been working on that for a while too. Awesome. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I am so sorry. My allergies are bothering me today. <laughs> um, so I, I, I know that there is a fine line between dive bombing someone and pulling it off in a better (laughs) fashion. So 
like what exactly are you trying to like, are you down to the fine tuning of things or is it going to be completely different because you're in a completely different car this year um i think it's going to be pretty i think it's going to be pretty different um last year in the car that we had last year those type of passes just didn't work especially with like the mini coopers and the mazdas they just it wouldn't work we had to pass mid corner so learning how to like outbreak someone is going to be a little of a challenge for me because I've never been one to really trust brakes. I've never liked to go into full ABS and lock up and everything. I just don't feel like it's going to stop. Um, so learning how to outbreak someone and not really dive bomb them, but go around them without causing an accident and then breaking, um, that's definitely going to be a challenge and something that I'll have to fine tune just because we weren't able to do that last year. And I mean, the club racing, I did spec, so it wasn't that easy for that either. Cause we, we all had the same car, same car, same brakes. So it's never something that I've really had to do. Sounds like a good learning experience though. Yeah, definitely. So this is a sort of non-racing question. If you were to pick one song to listen to before a race to get in the zone, what would it be and why? Um, one song. Or one artist. Mm, I've always been a Halsey fan. Good choice. I, I, can, I can always kind of mesh with like pretty much any of her music, even like depending on my mood, if I want to get like in a height mood or I want to chill, like she kind of always has everything for that i think so i like it and this year i'm actually going to build out that pit lane parlay spotify playlist that i said i would last year and i <laughs> never got around to it so uh, you are the second entry after whoever i talked to a, a week or two oh david malukas had something from post malone so uh, i am okay. learning a lot of new music this yeah. this uh this year so far post malone has some good stuff yeah agreed he's fun yeah um, okay, so I hate to be the girl here, but I'm going to ask the girl question. How is it being a female in motorsports right now? Um, I mean, like, obviously, it's a little tough just because I don't feel like we're taken as seriously. I feel like it's not as bad in IMSA just because there have been women for a while in IMSA. Um, SRO was a little different. There was there was only a few of us, and I think I was really the only one that did the whole entire season other than Sally. Um, and I, I don't think she did the last two races. Um, and then club racing, I was pretty much the only one that did um, the spec cars. So I don't feel like IMSA is too bad. Um, social media is not the best. That's a little tough. Um, kind of just have to let a lot of things roll off your back when it comes to social media and being a female in motorsports on social media. Kind of just got to let it roll and not pay too much attention to it. Um, but actually racing at the track at IMSA, I don't think is bad at all. Like I don't really feel like I'm looked down on or discriminated against or favored in any way at the track. Good. Yeah. Social media is uh, rough, even yeah. not being a female in yeah. racing. So I, yeah. I completely understand. Sometimes you can got to just uh, ignore it and move on. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I have no good words to add to that one. <laughs> so if you, if budget wasn't a concern at all, what type of car would you race in what series? Mm, I definitely would have to go with the Acura NSX. And I have always wanted to race in the um, like full 24 hour Le Mans. I think that's the best answer I've heard so far. Yeah. That'd be, man, I, I can't even imagine the 24 hour races. We, we did <laughs> Daytona and we were uh, rough to say the least. Yeah. So I can't imagine what you guys go through, but uh, super yeah. impressive. 
Yeah, um, I didn't actually get to stay for the full 24 hour. I had a, um, my best friend was getting married that Saturday. So I booked it that morning, but my parents stayed and they're like, yeah, it wasn't too bad. We actually slept through it, but we had earplugs. And I was like, okay, that doesn't yeah, count. Yeah, there was no sleeping for us. We, <laughs> yeah. we slept like 90 minutes or something each uh, and it was brutal. So, <laughs> um, okay. So I, I like to do this question just because it's fun and it, it gives us kind of an insight to your personality a little bit. Um, if you were to be hosting a dinner party and you could invite three people, any three people living or dead, who would you pick? Oh gosh. Any three people. Mm. Okay. I'm going to have to go with Michael Schumacher. Mm. I can't even think of people right now. I'm like trying to think of like people that seem fun and names can't pop in my head right now. <laughs> um, I know I put you on the spot. <laughs> he seems like he could be fun and I would like to pick his brain a lot. Um, Blake Lively seems like she would be pretty out there and fun. And then uh, Will Smith. Oh yeah, that'd be good. It's like, he, I feel like you have to have him at every dinner party. Like he just seems like he'd be a blast. Yeah, I agree. He does. And as a fellow Philadelphian, I always support anything Will Smith. <laughs> so I'll wrap it up here with one last question. Taylor, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Best of luck whenever we're able to get started here and you know stay safe through everything that's going on. But who is who are some drivers that you look up to around the IMSA paddock or around the uh, SRO paddock last year that that you've leaned on for some advice? Um, it's kind of a hard one. The SRO last year, I kind of just like talked to everyone. Um, both of the Pombos, when they were both there, I kind of would talk to them and like Pepe. I would get a little bit from him. Um, so I kind of had already started working my way in there before I actually got there, um, and had a relationship with them a little bit. Um, my team manager, Chris Haldeman, um, didn't have like a lot of experience pro racing, but he has years and years of experience anywhere else. So anytime I would really have an issue in SRO, I would typically go, kind of go to him just because he has so much knowledge on all things motor um IMSA wise I've watched Christina Nielsen for a while when she raced in what was then the Pirelli World Challenge so I've kind of watched her for a while and I talked to her a little bit at Daytona um and obviously she's really good friends with Ryan so he introduces me to a lot of people um I haven't really gotten to talk to a lot of people and like get info or anything like that at IMSA just I mean I feel like Daytona you're learning everything you're like here and there and it's kind of all just like a mess trying to figure out what all you need to do and where you need to go and being with like a new team so I haven't really gotten the chance to really talk to any of the drivers with IMSA yet. Yeah, that's fair. It was a kind of a, a short time there before everything came to a, a halt yeah. like this so Again, thank you for joining. Best of luck this year. Look forward to seeing you at the track at, at some point. Uh, Jess, go ahead and sign us off. And guys, keep your lug nuts tight.